Hey guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to Card Shark, the game where you must lie, cheat, and hustle money out of various historical figures using real card tricks. Continuing the adventure, I received word from our dear Voltaire. We must have impressed him as we've been invited back to the Parliament Cafe. We met him and his friend who were impressed by our cheats and liked being cheated for some reason. It's time we brought in our repertoire and put on a real show. This strategy will rely on sleight of hand and some skullduggery with a spare deck. To kick things off, I'll slip a second deck into your pocket as you pour me a drink. Then I'll make an excuse for you to get somewhere out of sight. Using the duplicate deck, you will prepare me a favorable stack before concealing it in the palm of your hand. When you rejoin the table, offer to cut the cards before we resume our game. Seize this opportunity to place the cards you arranged at the top of the deck. And that's the essence of the twin deck theft. It's quite simple, really. Let's give it a try. First, let's practice the part where I slip you the duplicate deck, or as I like to call it, the part where I get to have another drink. This is the practice. We're going to pull off this con and hopefully make a lot of money off of it. Right, I forgot how to pour a drink. Coming back to this after maybe 10 days. So I think he slipped it. Thanks, lad. At this point, I'll find a reason to send you away to a back room. Imagine there are five of us playing and I'm the last in the deal. Make me a stack that favors me and disadvantages my opponents. Great, now push the card to my position in the deal by stacking four low-ranking cards. So one, two, three, and four. Well done. Now conceal the stack in the palm of your hand so that you're ready to deposit it while cutting. Ah, very sneaky. Excellent, I trust you understood all of that. I did. That's the spirit. As you can see, the individual techniques are simple enough. But there's a bit of a catch. Let's pretend that we're moving on to the next round. And I've just finished dealing. What's this? Two of the same card? Ah, yes, of course. We have to get rid of the old card. You must be mistaken, good sir. Mistaken? There are duplicate cards right here in my hand. <laughs> a simple printing error, I swear. Do you take me for a fool? You're a cheat. Gendarmes! <laughs> no, never the gallows. I don't know what he just said, but I love that self-conversation. What the f- So as you can see, adding a handful of new cards to the deck is all well and good until our opponent ends up with duplicates, which means we're a bit stuck. I don't know why you're smiling. My strategy is flawed, I'm not sure what to suggest now. Ha! You should see your face, lad. I wouldn't have taught you all this just to tell you it doesn't work. We simply need to play with the other deck. There's no duplicates in that one. As you know, it's actually missing a few cards. We can exchange the two decks with the wine pouring trick from before. This will not only relieve us of our problem, but also present us with another stacking opportunity. And this time, we can avoid the duplicate card issue. Consider the deck you'll be creating a stack from this time. It'll be missing the cards used to create a favorable stack with earlier on. You can make another favorable stack by adding those cards back to the deck they originally came from. So I hope you remember the cards you panned before. Of course. No need to lie to me, lad. But in future, you must remember the first cards you pammed during this strategy. If you forget, you can always scan the deck for duplicate cards. That sounds rather, rather dull, though. Either way, after moving the duplicates, you need to stack them atop the table deck on your return. And don't forget to make sure I get the high card. There's time to perfect it yet, but that's the plan. The Indiscreet Thief. It's a little fiddly, I know, but I have faith in your abilities, lad. I strongly advise you try the entire strategy without my instruction, what do you say? Good choice, time to fill my cup then. All right, so we switch out the decks. It's been done. I go to another room for some reason. First, oh, he's in the second position, but you know, I'll give him an ace. Aces are cool, come on. Oh, this is gonna be tough. There's the ace, so I do one junk card. And now I assume I can still keep doing junk cards? No, it pushes the ace back. So obviously I need to reset. So I need to think about the order because he's in second. So I gotta do three junk cards, then an ace. Boom, boom. There we go. Then the ace. This is very helpful practice, not but a four. So then I sit back down, cut the deck. Bring in those cards. Everything is going well so far, lad. Now for the tricky part. Pour it again. Oh, 
Good old deck swap. Good poor. Shit. I totally forgot about this part. I had to search through the deck and get rid of every duplicate. Um, I didn't remember those because my reading comprehension is non-existent. Oh, and this presents another stacking opportunity. I've got to stack it so his is second. And to be completely honest, I actually forgot to keep track of what cards I put in, but hopefully the duplicates are here. After a lot of picking and prodding, I believe I found the duplicates. Got in a good order as well. I'm going to create a system for remembering it. It's just something I didn't really understand that I had to do, but now I get it. It's also why I don't like reading games, because I don't actually read when I read. I mostly just speak. And if you've ever spoken out loud and read at the same time, you don't really get to understand the words because you're so focused on saying them. You seem to have gotten all the duplicate cards and managed to stack them in my favor too. I ought to be able to win the next round without risk of our ploy being uncovered. You have this well in hand, I'd say. I think it's time to move on. Very well, I'll leave you to your thoughts. Do you feel that? The carriage wheels have hit cobblestone. We're here. Ah, there he is. My friends, I'm so glad to see you again. What are you doing? I'm practicing while Voltaire is hammering his latest philosophical marvel inside the mind of Boyotians. <laughs> Our previous encounter revealed a new world to me. Do you know you can cheat a coin flip? You have to put the coin between your index and thumb. Then imprint a quick rotation to the coin by snapping your fingers at the same time you throw the coin upward. Damn. The theory is that the coin will come back in your hand on the same side as you throw it. It's called steady coin. Good luck with that. What a pleasure. Voltaire, I received your letter. How could we be of assistance? Our previous encounter gave me the foundations for a rather unique satire of Leibnizian optimism and its ridiculous consequences. Suspicious. Calm yourself, I just need you for a small experiment. An experiment? What sort of experiment? Inside are three optimistic fools waiting to be slaughtered at your hands. What? Enter, cheat, and ruin them. Each of them has only known the contents of a perfectly comfortable life so far, either by luck, heritage, or sheer avarice. I want to know what happens when the advantages are gone. What's in it for us? They are rich and gullible. <laughs> Let's go. This almost seems too good. Here they are. Reverend. General. Madame. Let me introduce you to your adversaries tonight. The little one is much to my taste. I will eat him alive. <laughs> that young fellow is no match for my strategic mind, I can tell already. Come and join us, comrades. Do you want the white or the black? We're not playing one of your lenient games of chess tonight, General. We're playing cards for money. I knew that, of course. It was a fig figurative speech. Do we have to bet money? It's not really a Christian thing to do. Reverend, we all know that despite your slender aspect, money is stuffed in all your sacred orifices. It's time to bet. How much would I like to bet? Well, a cool 10. They're gullible, so I imagine the suspicions won't go up. Lad, you look tired. Get yourself some coffee. Go stretch your legs. We're all friends here. Oh, why, of course. Would you be so kind as to refill my glass before you go? Why, of course. There you go, a nice glass. And off to the room I go. All right, so this is the tough one. I got to create a system for figuring out which cards I will cheat. Let's do a cool, uh, he is in the last position. So three regular cards, we'll do four hearts. We'll do a two of hearts, do a two of diamonds. If I could find something else, let's maybe do a six of hearts and then ace of hearts for his. So a bunch of hearts, one diamond. The only other diamond is a two. Ace two six four with an extra two of diamonds. Just gotta make it somewhat easy to remember. Feeling better? Please give the deck a cut so the general can deal. A very clean cut. No suspicions raised. Delta hand. Oh, I've dealt my own hand and cut the deck. They are very gullible. Well done. That was a brilliant round. Wait, does that mean I've won? No, you didn't. He's being sarcastic. Me too. Aha. Right. And what are you waiting for? Deal again. And the bets have doubled. Lad, are you well? Hesitating. Young man, you seem to have weak blood. Please come back when you feel better. What a quaffable grape. Pour me some more on your way out, lad. 
A grape, that's that's a great, great word. Oh, it's gonna be close. Ooh, a very good pour. Didn't spill, didn't raise any suspicions, didn't arouse any. Ace two six four two of diamonds. Should be pretty simple. Just find the dupes. So he's in the last position. So the ace has to come last. Where are any of them? Here's the six. I'm glad he keeps track of duplicates removed. This is the hard part for sure. I guess I could do two of diamonds right now. Two and four hearts. Can't do the ace of hearts yet. Gotta be stacked properly. There's the two. I have two. Okay. For a second, I almost removed both red twos, but we're chilling. Things are great. Barely any suspicion, but if I have to do it again, we'll be cutting it close. That's put some color in your cheeks. Go ahead and cut the deck, lad. It wouldn't make sense for us to do it again, because if I keep going from sick to well to sick to well, surely there, there'd be a huge jump in suspicion. But I did win. Oh, and they don't have 80 for the next bet? Or is 40 the next bet? All three of them, so empty. No, we do go to 40. I could try to take them for all. Oh, that raises suspicion. Oh, I see. So if I want to maximize, I can wager suspicion. Only thing is I don't... It's going to be a last round. Eh, what's a little bit extra among friends? I'll, I'll bet all 70. Do I need another walk, lad? Again? Do excuse the boy. Our carriage hit a goose earlier, and he's been feeling off color ever since. Oh, how upsetting. Go take a walk, little one. It's only moderately sus. Would you look at that? An empty glass. You know what to do, boy. So I think we'll only have the easy half of the trick. So just get him a good card. He is in the last position. So I can do four, five, two of clubs, two of spades. And I saw a cool ace of clubs over here. Looking good. Two, four, five. Just in case we have to come back for some reason. But I don't think we will. Well, that's all the money. I've lost everything. You're cheating. No, I'm not. Not you, Bubblehead. Them. I disagree, madame. Me too. I've studied these fellows. And although they are peculiar, foul play couldn't escape my uh, sagacity. How could it, General? How could it? Farewell, my friends. I hope we will meet again. You owe us a revenge. The extra 30 coin was worth a lot of suspicion, yes, but uh, it was quite fun. That was an incredible demonstration. Thank you. We were lucky. I doubt luck plays any part in your game. But shall we confirm this beyond doubt? Be my guest. Do you remember giving this coin to our young friend here? If your friend manages to toss it up th heads three times in a row, you win. I will do it. What? But how? The coin flip. Here's the coin. How much shall we bet? Uh, none. Because there is no confidence here. Oh. So flip it heads, and then you just gotta time it. It's, it's a good old timing game. Well done. Bravo, let's try again. Only if we double the bet. I think I'm getting the idea. So, heads, send it. Ooh, it's getting faster. Let's see how good my reaction time can get. I'm willing to double it once more. Another try. Okay, nailed it, nailed it. It didn't seem that much faster, but it was uh, about the same as the last one, actually. I don't know what spell you cast on that coin, but I accept the feat. Eh, it's just a one in eight chance. We will take our leave now. Again, you win, and yet, I pity both of you, my friends. Trying to skew chance is the best way to be its instrument. You did it, didn't you? The steady coin trick? Just luck. My apprentice cont continues to surprise me. You cannot help it, dear. Our generation will bury yours in the history books. I've unlocked more on the map. Well, interesting. This has coins on it. So I wonder if I'll be doing more coin tricks if I go towards the barn. Curious to see if that's the symbol or if it's just referring to sweet cash money. All right, lad. They should be here soon. They? Why, our opponents for this evening. Do you remember Toulouse? Uh, those three gamblers with unlimited funds and an unquenchable thirst to lose that money. That sort of golden goose doesn't show up very often. It would be criminal to let them go. So I've organized a game with them. Here they come. Think about the strategy you want to apply. You seem particularly jovial tonight. Not that it matters. I'm taking the pot. I win at the card table just as I win on the battlefield. Oh, it's these guys again. Always pressing, never retreating. And rarely sober. 
Let's see if those both have any truth to them. Literally infinite money? What the fuck? Does he just print his own money? Let's start things off with a cool 40. It doesn't seem that the suspicion raises much now. Oh, and this is a test. How about I start this off with the cool indiscreet fingers? Where I look for the highest card and memorize its rank and suit. So that five of diamonds, 10 of spades is also irrelevant to basically jack or higher. And then I do a signal to him based off what that card in fact is. King of spades is pretty up there. King of spades. Jack of diamonds is not it. it, is in fact the king of spades. So king of spades brings me down to, fuck, I meant to bring it down further. I just physically messed it up. I wanted to do one finger because I remember three fingers is clubs, two fingers is hearts, one is spades. I just saw the bar moving really fast and I panicked. Damn it, how did I lose? You didn't fool, you won, did I? Yes, you did, hard to imagine how. Whoa, the bet's gone from five to 10, you know what? Let's make it small. That is so fast, but fine. We'll bet 10 because I realize I can't do any more suspicion. I know this one. I just want to get it right this time. Jack of hearts. I assume I have to get each one right once. Queen of spades. Okay, spades is one finger. Ace of clubs. Ace of clubs. Clubs is all three fingers. And ace means you drag it up. I mean, you send it like this. How do I, how do I, oh, fuck. come on. Come on, there we go. There we go. We were getting... Oh, they're getting very suspicious. Oh, Bishop's bottom lost again. This would be a lot easier if I did this all in the same session. Not everyone is as comfortable blaspheming as loudly as you. Nice word, lad. Now let's quit while we're still ahead. We're not ahead. But... I'm going to be completely honest. I don't like how fast that uh, bar is moving. I'm just going to get the hell out of here. These guys are extremely suspicious. Congrats, you won money off of us. You know, never mind that they won less money off of us than we won off of them the previous time. Ah, is that the time? Do excuse us, but we have quite the journey to make. Until next time. That should convince them. That should throw them off our tail. It's about the long con. It's like we each won one, so it seems kind of fair. Not very suspicious. So how about I go check out hospice? Maybe we'll meet new people here. Put down your journal, lad. I owe you an explanation. You gather we're not traveling together by chance? Suspicious. I have only good reasons, believe me. France is on the verge of tremendous change. The best change. I believe we can make a fortune just by listening closely. You see, I'm investigating a secret called the 12 bottles of milk. One of the witnesses to this secret is Henry de, de a former musketeer of Louis the 15th. Uh, if he is a friend of the Baroness, then he must be a gambler. Do you have any questions before we discuss our strategy? Here's a weird one. Who the hell is McGregor? He's a politician, otherwise known as a successful con artist. He has the ears and some say the signature of Louis the 15th. Something else? A secret wedding could be the ugly truth that topples the monarchy. And I have reasons to believe that Louis XV was married in his youth. Something else? Well, this guy we're coming after. He's retired to a hospice near Bergerac. He used to be a fearsome warrior. Now he's, well, you'll soon see for yourself. Something else? How about you? I'm very well, lad, if not a little gouty. Thank you for asking. Something else? Well, let's talk strategy then. The idea here is to steal an ace early in the game before faking a shuffle and ensuring it's dealt to me. Let's practice the first part, sticky hand. As you discard your hand, tuck an ace into your pam and steal it. No one will notice the incorrect count if you do it smoothly. So it's a timing thing. Smooth as butter. Except the card was definitely poking out. Your next job is to arrange the deck while pretending to shuffle. Now I know what you're thinking. You've done this before, and the comp drank so much you can't remember. But no! Listen closely, lad. Begin by transferring a generously sized pack into your other hand. Good. Now offset for me being dealt fourth by dropping three cards one at a time. Now in jog a card so we can restore these cards to the top of the deck. Now we have a mark for where the top of the deck will be. Drop the rest of the cards on top. This, it does seem like what I've done before. They're going to say it's different though. 
here is where we depart from the beaten, beaten path. You can't always rely on me to cut the deck. So this time, you'll be taking the matter into your own hands. Square the cards using the Injog Market to create a small gap at your stack. Now we need to restore our stack, start shuffling through again. Make sure to transfer everything before the gap and then stop. Beyond that is the stack we arranged, so drop everything else on top all at once and we're done. So now we're to the Injog cards and that just falls on top. Let's see if it all worked. Next one should be an ace, and it is. Voila! It seems you've understood that shuffling variation. But we can go over it again if you'd like. I think I got it. It seems pretty familiar. Rest and prepare for our arrival. We can do a bit of relaxed grammar practice. Don't make that face at me, lad. It's for your benefit. Wake up, boy. Wake up. We've arrived. Deborah, my sweet angel, where are you? My bones are weary. Your gentle touch. I am here, Henry. These two gentlemen would like to talk to you. Good day to you, my lord. Your lovely niece told us you are resting. I hope we're not bothering you. To what do I owe this visit? Should I tell you over a game of cards? You, me, your niece, and my quiet friend. Well, we make a fine party. Let's dance then. Please have a seat. All right, and I'm locked into a bet of 20. That is okay. So I have the ace. I don't even know what this game is, really. This whole time, who knows what game they're even playing. He is in the second position. So you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You go do a little bit of shuffling, and then he keeps shuffling. And we're good. Moderately suspicious, but not bad for my first attempt. Good friend of mine told me an excellent story. Really, pray tell. It's the story of the 12 bottles of milk. That sounds like a good story. Did you say... 12 bottles? Who who told you about that? Someone that likes to play cards as well. Theodore. What did he say? Theodore von Neuhoff? How interesting. I have nothing to tell you. Shall we carry on playing? Yes, certainly yes. Up to 40. It feels like this is the last game. There's my ace. I could intentionally fail this to win the bet of 80. Mm, but that's kind of all the same because I lose 40 gain 80. He's in the fourth position to so do one two three That's not right <laughs> That I did the wrong motions. This is just shuffle the deck We're gonna all right. It's fine. I was just saying how uh, Losing the 40 and the 80 Or losing the 40 gaining the 80 is exactly the same as winning the 40 But we've dodged a bit of suspicion once I played cards against the Cardinal Richelieu during the Siege of La Rochelle. Uh, truly, you're a living history of France. I doubt it's a history we would like to remember. Never saw someone cheat so much as the Cardinal. I've always been fascinated by cheats. Their tricks amaze me. He would have ruined you. Yeah, it's the same mount, but if I win this, it basically makes up for the last one. Got the ace. Clue, I can't talk while doing it. I need to focus on actually remembering. What happens? See so it tap, 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 do one of these, and then shuffle. And keep the shuffling going. It's just the shuffle. Why are you so suspicious? I'm literally just shuffling cards. There we go. My money. Where is it gone? Did you win, Mazu? <laughs> Mon Mon I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say any of these words. Just um, imagine that I'm saying them right. My purse is light as a feather. I need to retire. Our game is too young to leave so early. It is too bad. Deborah, I... It's the last time I help you, Henry. He will ruin you. Nonsense. We are your friends, Henry. You know that. Oh, he's got one last supply of cash. So you're acquainted with Theodore. How is the old rascal? He's up to his neck in debts. Thankfully, he's a little fellow. Is he still in Germany? I don't know. He calls himself the Count of Caprera now. Nothing like nobility to discourage the debtors. Hot indeed. Shall we play a game? If I win again, you will tell me the secret you share with Theodore. I'd rather die than give you what you want. Let's not be dramatic. We shall play and you will speak. All right, so all in, just don't mess this up. I have an ace. Good thing I keep getting these aces. I feel like this whole plan will fall apart if I never got the ace. So he's in the third position. Shuffle, pop, pop, in jog. And then keep shuffling, shuffle quickly, shuffle quickly, shuffle quickly, shuffle quickly. We're good. 
We did win. Very suspicious, but it was close. Oh. Oh, no. You would rather die. You're done, old man. Now tell me your story. Do it, and I will spare a hundred livers so your niece can keep wiping your ass for a while. It all happened in February 1723, near Paris. This way. Make way for the king! Sophie. <gasps> no! Sophie! That Sophie? No! You will not hear one more word! I swore an oath to the king. Huh, I didn't know he was Japanese. Sophie, what happened to Sophie? How could I be the last one standing? Where have you all gone, my friends? He's dead. Old fool, dramatic and incontinent to the end. Let's go, there's nothing left for us to do here. I wonder where Theodore is hiding. Like, yeah, just another Tuesday. This old fool. So on that note, I will call it here. Very interesting story so far. I'm excited to see where it goes. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. More cheating at cards coming as soon as long as this series remains popular. I'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day and peace.